Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. First fear, now frustration. After a stabbing in Frazier leaves one child dead, two others were injured. And the community is now demanding even more answers. My son thinks he saved his life. So if my son believes he did, I do too. That mom talking about a good Samaritan who helped her eight-year-old son after he was put on the wrong bus and then left alone roaming the streets of a neighborhood miles from his house. And Mustang Makeover. Ford is rolling out a pretty slick new version of its iconic hot rod at the North American International Auto Show. We begin with breaking news from Warren, where police are investigating a bank robbery. It happened at the Fifth Third Bank along Van Dyke near 13 Mile. This is a live look there from the scene. Police are telling us the suspect is a woman, but very few other details are known at this time. We're going to continue to follow this story for you, and we'll update you as we get a better description of who police are looking for in this bank robbery. In the meantime, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for Local 4 News here at noon. I'm Everard Kasimi. And I'm Rhonda Walker, and we are going to get to those other stories in just a moment. But we also want to talk about this developing story. We've just learned that former President Donald Trump is coming to town. Trump's Save America group announced that he will be here on Saturday, October 1st. Yeah, Trump is going to be holding a rally in Warren in support of the Republican candidates in the upcoming November election. It is going to happen at the Macomb County Community College Sports and Expo Center. And it will be billed as an all-day event with Trump making Remarks at 7 o'clock that night. More information as it becomes available. We'll keep you updated both here and on clickondetroit.com. All right, so in other news this afternoon, there's still frustration in Frazier, as we were mentioning at the top of the hour here, where many parents and even many students want more information about this deadly stabbing that happened on Tuesday. What we can tell you is that additional police were on hand today at Richards Middle School and Frazier High School. Police now say that a high school student was killed stabbed and killed and two other people were hurt during a fight that took place in the area of Garfield and Klein Roads, not on any school property. For nearly 24 hours, Fraser schools would not even confirm if any students were involved, a decision that parents say fueled fear among many students who are now starting to mourn the loss of one of their classmates. He had like the brightest smile and he had a lot of friends and a lot of like freshmen a lot of freshmen were at school today because, like, they were emotional, and I get that. We are told that the two others stabbed are expected to be okay. Police still have not said what sparked the fight, but we do know three people remain in custody as prosecutors sort through the evidence. So we'll pass along more information just as soon as we're able to gather it. We move over to Warren now, where three Macomb County schools will reopen today after being closed on Wednesday because of a social media threat. The threats have been traced to a 13-year-old student at Carter Middle School. Police say that teen is in custody and will face charges. The threat led to canceled classes at Carter Community High School and Cusno High School. Warren Consolidated Superintendent Robert Livernoy put out a statement about it, and it reads in part, despite the frustration of these senseless threats, our school safety protocols were initiated overnight and we were able to respond accordingly. Ah, one of my favorite subjects to talk about the weather when yeah, it's good, especially when we are <laughs> just inches away from the weekend. Let's yes. turn things over to meteorologist Brandon Rue. 70 degrees, not bad for your Thursday in the middle of September. Yeah, it, it really nice, comfortable air out there and there are some wispy clouds, not with any threat for rain. You know, we could use a little bit of rain. We've got the drought monitor update coming up in a few, but it is mainly 60s out there, flirting with 70 everywhere. 69 Metro, 68 Howell, 68 Flint right now. The winds from the east, southeast, and so we are getting some moisture getting scooped out of Lake Erie, and we're seeing some of these wispy clouds over the area again. Pretty harmless. This is clouds and radar, and all we're seeing are a little bit of wispy cloud cover. And we'll get into some decent sunshine. Middle upper 70s today, a little above average, and for the most part, looking good, feeling good. We've got more summer like stuff ahead. All right. Brandon, thank you. Let's uh, talk about the auto show now because. 
The reviews are over for this year's auto show. By comparison, a very small group. Um, but probably I'd say maybe no surprise concerning the show is evolving. Mm -hmm. It's an indoor outdoor experience and a lot of the biggest stuff going on on the cars is in the cars like the technology aspect. Local for business editor Rod Maloney joins us now live this noon with a look at that. The, the suppliers are really getting a, a spotlight this time around. That's right. Now, if you look behind me here, we've got the ride and drive here with the uh, the truck territory over at the Dodge Ram site. And that's a lot of what we have out here. Bronco's got a uh, booth like that. Jeep is also doing the ride and drive. But if you like to take a look behind me here, you've got Automobile D. Now, this used to be kept downstairs because, you know, it's, it's not the exciting stuff that you would expect to find in an auto show. But it's the important stuff because suppliers are equally important in this town as the original equipment manufacturers. So we went and talked to these guys today to find out what they're doing and why they're up here. No, the displays don't move or drive or jolt or try and grab your attention. But if you're looking to do business in the auto world, this is where you come. And we're finding there are a lot of new demands on old companies like, say, Eaton here. Eaton has long made gears, valves, and transmissions. They understand vehicle electrical systems as well. And that comes handy as the industry goes all electric, says Patrick La Rochelle. We're bringing all that expertise, all the knowledge into immobility. So we're, the space is expanding, as you can see, and we're bringing all the technical expertise into what we think is the best fit for the vehicle application. And what they're selling is market expertise, but more than that, flexibility. We got to keep up with what the demand is, and it, the demand is really crazy right now. We got to go faster and faster and faster. Everybody is trying to catch up and be out there as quick as possible. At the other end of the aisle, we found these unusual displays, motorcycle airbags and airbags of all stripes. Turns out these are not just ideas, as Pontus Sonnerstrom explained. Uh, particularly in markets uh, like Asia, where you have millions of motorcycles in traffic, uh, they're very vulnerable. There's many of them, and they tend to you know, drive into cars and other things. And their foot traffic's been great, which means being here is something he's embracing. I think it's a, it's a good venue for us, especially now with the, the, all the suppliers that are here as well. I think uh -huh. this, is, this is a new take that I kind of like. Now, Pontus also works for AutoLeave. We showed the, the uh, graphic there, but uh, they're doing a lot of things that are dealing with possibilities. And in fact, they have video that shows that they're putting airbags in like the, uh, the, the, the front of the driving uh, section by the windshield wiper. So if there's a pedestrian accident and you hit that, there's an airbag for you. Lots of possibilities, lots of interesting things that they're all working on. And uh, these guys, in many ways, drive Metro Detroit as much as the OEMs. Back to you. I mean, this is really fascinating stuff to see, Rod. I know there's a whole lot going on there at Huntington Place, indoors and just outside. Uh, we're going to be checking back in with you in a little bit, but what are you going to show us? Give us a little tease here. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm not going to give too much away, other than to say, do you remember George Jetson? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, the cartoon? Of course. <laughs> yes, the cartoon, bro. Well, he, what, what, what did he drive? Uh, it was a little bit before my time, but I do remember the cartoon. So why don't you enlighten <laughs> he us? He had a flying, flying car. car. A flying car, okay. Is that Artiz? So we'll, we'll take a look at that. Oh, wow. okay. It just got real interesting, didn't it? <laughs> Well, you had to think it's a matter of time. <laughs> yeah, it was the only matter of time. They would finally have flying cars. All right, Rod. We're finally there. He, he made a promise, and we're going to hope that he delivers with this one. All right, Rod, we'll see you in a little bit. Wouldn't mind catching one on my way to work at 3.30 in the that morning. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Um, so last night was huge. It was a big reveal by Ford Motor Company. It took center stage and also took over a local freeway, <laughs> unveiling mm. the 2024 Ford Mustang in front of a large crowd at Hart Plaza Outdoors it, downtown. It has a new body, a new design, new engine options. Mm -hmm. But for now, it's going to stick with pure gasoline power. And what was also unveiled was the Dark Horse Mustang as well. And it is a beauty. President Biden was also at the auto show yesterday touring electric cars or touting electric cars. The president also announced the approval of funding for 35 states, including our state of Michigan, to build their own electric charging infrastructure. They're going to be part of a, a network of 500,000 charging stations.
And a big night Friday night is all about raising millions of dollars for children's charities here in Detroit at the Auto Show. Charity Preview returns. It's one of the biggest events of the year with all of the impact on Michigan charities. And Friday night, we will have our live coverage from the Charity Preview at Huntington Place right there on the Auto Show floor. You can see us both here on the air and streaming on Local 4 Plus. Our show gets underway at 7 p.m. Hope you'll be tuning in. And of course, the show opens to the public the day after that on yes. Saturday. And you can purchase tickets for the auto show on NAIAS.com. Tickets are 20 bucks for adults, $10 for children, and I believe seniors are 12. Also developing this noon, turning gears here, two busloads of migrants from Texas were driven and dropped off near Washington, D.C. in the residence of Vice President Kamala Harris. Authorities say that between 75 and 100 people were on the buses, which were reportedly sent to D.C. by Texas Governor Greg Abbott. The move is the last action in the ongoing political fight over border control and how to handle illegal migrants, immigrants. Now, as of this noon, there's been no response from the vice president. Two local churches in this D.C. area have stepped in to help the migrants. New this afternoon, a massive investment for the I-375 project here in the city of Detroit. Michigan is going to be receiving a $104.6 million grant from the United States Department of Transportation. Now, the money will go towards plans to replace this I-375 freeway with a boulevard instead that's at street level. City leaders say the goal is to reconnect the once predominantly black, thriving neighborhood known as Black Bottom and Paradise Valley that were lost when the freeway was created. And there's some big news out of the sports world. You know, tennis great Roger Federer. He announced that he's retiring. We haven't seen him kind of competing yeah. in a little bit. Roger Federer is 41 years old and in tennis years, that's retirement age. He says that his final tournament will be at a tournament that is played in London. It is scheduled to begin next week. He is a 20 time Grand Slam champion, but has also endured three knee surgeries and you need good knees to play that sport. So once you hit 35, those knees are shot. Yes, you know, but maybe he saw Serena and said, hey, yeah, I I've accomplished too. enough too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's sit it out. Yes, it's still to come, calling it quits. Yeah, less than a year after the tragic shooting in Oxford High School, the head of the school district is stepping down. We'll have more on that. And the royal farewell to Queen Elizabeth II continues. And these are live pictures from London where mourners are lining up by the thousands to say goodbye.